everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and in today's video we're going to be doing a set of builder gel nails using the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gel. So I really hope you all enjoy watching. For today's set I'm working on a practice hand so I don't have any natural nail prep to do. However I do have a dedicated prep video up on the channel so I'll leave that linked at the bottom of the description box below. So check that out first if you want to go over any of the prep steps. I'm just going to run over these nails with an alcohol pad just because I buffed the shine off of the tips and I want my products and gel to adhere to the tips. So I've just given them a quick buff and a quick wipe. Then I'm going to apply my nail tips. Now these are tips that I've had in my kit for ages. I really do hope that in the future Kiki London do bring out some tips. A lot of the time though in all honesty if I'm using the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gel on myself I will sculpt with them because it's a very easy product to sculpt with and I really love the Kiki London sculpting forms. However I do find it a little bit trickier to sculpt on the practice hand because the forms don't like to stick to the silicone hand. So for ease it's a little bit easier to use tips on the practice hand but personally if I'm working on myself I do prefer to sculpt. I have got other builder gel videos up on the channel so I will leave some of them linked in the description box below as well. I'm going to apply my tips to all of the nails and then I did off camera trim these down to a nice short slash medium length as you can see here. Now these particular tips have quite a deep C curve so they are a little tricky to file when they've not got any product on them. I find them a lot easier to finish file at the end of the set but what I'm going to do is just using the 180 grit side of my file I'm just going to bring those side walls in a little bit just so that they're nice and flush to the natural nail and then I'm going to neaten up the very free edge of the nail. Now you only need to do this using the 180 grit side of your file because tips do file very easily in general. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Kiki London buffer and I'm just going to remove any shine that's on the tip just so again my product is going to stick. Gel doesn't like to stick to a shiny surface so you kind of just want to remove any shine if you are working with tips. Again I did that to all of the nails and we now need to give them another clean and dehydrate. So I'm going to run over them with a nail brush just to remove any of that dust especially from underneath the nails as well. It's really important to remove any of the dust before you come in with any of your products. Then I'm going to take one of the alcohol pads. Now if I was working on myself I would be using this alcohol pad one to clean off any of that remaining dust and two to dehydrate the natural nail plate. Then after you've done that you would come in with your primer. I'm just showing you guys the primer here. I'm not actually going to use it on the practice hand. We're going to jump straight to the base coat. Now for my base coat I'm using the rubber base coat. I do find that the rubber base coat works best with the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gels and I really like to scrub this in to the nail plate when I'm working on real nails. So you'll see here what I do is I press it down just away from that cuticle area, scrub it in a little bit into that natural nail plate and then I'm able to push that brush up and around the cuticle area and get a really nice neat application. I like to start off by working slightly away from the cuticle area because then you unload some of your product from your brush and that makes it a little bit easier to get a nice neat cuticle without getting any product on those cuticles. If you do find that you get any product on the cuticles make sure to clean it off with a little bit of alcohol before popping it into cure. I'm keeping this nice and thin because I don't want to be adding any thickness with the base coat. I'm just making sure that it covers the entire nail. And then we're going to pop that in to cure for 60 seconds. Next up, I'm going to be taking the Easy Build Up Gel in Crystal Clear. Now, this particular step is completely optional. I'm basically going to pop down a thin, clear layer on all of the nails. Now the reason why I say this is optional is because you don't need to put a clear layer down if you're just doing a full set of builder gel nails and then gel polish on top because when your client comes in for a redesign you're just going to file off the gel polish design and then infill with your builder gel but on the pointer and the little finger in this design I'm going to be encapsulating glitters so if I was doing that on myself and then in two three weeks time I want to do a different design I don't want to have to file all or completely remove all of the product so then what I would be able to do is I would be able to file back to this clear layer and then infill and continue on. I hope that makes sense. 
And I'm keeping this layer quite thin. I'm not building up any thickness or structure with it. I'm applying it very similar to how you would apply your gel polish because we are gonna build up our strength and structure when it comes to doing our pink builder gel and doing our design. So just a nice thin layer. I do also find as well when you are working with tips, it helps make a nice transition between the natural nail plate and the tips. If you had sculpted, you would have a thin, clear sculpted layer down anyway if you hadn't built up your nails. So once I have applied this thin clear layer to all of the nails, we're going to pop these in to cure for 60 seconds. And that's going to give us a nicer base to work on top of for our design. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to be encapsulating some glitters in this design. So I'm going to start off by taking one of the new Kiki London Nail Art palettes. I'm really loving this one in white. And I'm going to pop down a really small amount of the Crystal Clear Easy Build Up Gel. We don't need too much gel. We're only going to be using this to get our glitter in place and to apply it down on to the nail. Then I've got a bunch of glitters. I'm going to start off with this one, but I do end up coming in with, I think, two others throughout the design just because I wanted a mix of pinks. <laughs> Throughout this set as well, I'm also going to be using the Kiki London Round Nail Art Brush. This brush works really well with the Builder Gel, so I will be using it for different steps throughout this set. But here, I'm just using it to take a small amount of that Builder Gel and just apply a teeny tiny amount of where I want my glitters to go. So I'm going to be applying the glitters around the cuticle area, fading down the nail plate. And then I'm just going to use that same brush to pick up my glitters. So I'm keeping the brush tacky with the clear gel because then it's going to pick up those glitters a lot easier and then I'm just going to press them down into that tiny bit of gel that we applied to the nail plate. Now you do need to be careful here that you don't get any of the glitters or the gel on that cuticle area so you can see I'm tilting the nail or the finger sorry downwards so that I'm able to make sure that no product is running back into the cuticle areas and then I'm able to just nudge those glitters around into place and because of the size of the round nail art brush it makes this nice and easy because you're able to have a lot of control over the products and in this case the glitters. Now, as I said, I do use a few different glitters in this design, and that's because I wanted there to be some different reflections. So we have some metallic pieces, some opal pieces, some iridescent pieces, and then I do also come in with a matte pink glitter as well. They are going to be hidden by the pink gel polish. So just having those different effects there is just going to give off a different look, if that makes sense. You'll see as we get towards the end of the video. I'm just making sure I only apply a few pieces of glitter. You don't want to add, you don't want to end up with your glitter too bulky and too layered up, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to make sure that not too many of my pieces of glitter are overlapping, just picking up small amounts at a time. You don't want to end up applying too much glitter down on the nail because then you're going to have to remove it, especially when you're only doing a fade like this. You want to keep it quite thin because you don't want to end up with a bulky cuticle or apex area because we have still got to encapsulate. So that's why I'm just picking up a few pieces at a time and taking my time to really nudge them into place. And like I said, we're fading it slightly down the nail. So I'm just bringing a few of them down. And then once I'm happy with how all of these are placed, because we've placed them down using the clear builder gel, I'm then going to pop them in to cure for 60 seconds. I really loved how this looked with the clear tip. So that's another design that I might do in the future. Let me know if you would like to see that. So once we'd pop that into cure, all of those glitters are now frozen in place. So they're not going to move around on the nail when we're applying our pink. And for our pink, I have the beautiful Sweet Rose Builder Gel. So what I'm going to start off by doing is if you've watched my previous Builder Gel videos or if you're familiar with Builder Gel, one of the application techniques is by doing a wet slip layer and then your builder gel layer. So that's what I'm doing to begin with here, my wet slip layer. But because we're going over glitter, I'm really making sure to get around those glitter pieces. So I'm really working it into where the glitter is uneven to get a full layer of builder gel all around them and make sure that there's gonna be no air bubbles or gaps when we're applying our builder layer, which is what we're applying now. So with our builder layer, it's slightly thicker. I kind of worked in this particular set with thin to medium thickness layers. So it's not super thick. I didn't want to apply it too thickly 
in case it made our glitters too hidden. So I decided I would do this layer with a medium thickness because then if you wanted to build up the rest of your structure, you could with clear. I did end up doing both layers with the Sweet Rose because I quite liked the effect it give off. But of course, that would be personal preference. Then I'm taking that round nail art brush and I'm able to get a bit of a neater cuticle area with this one. I'm able to get a little bit closer and really tuck that product in, which would have been a little bit tricky with the bottle brush. Then I popped that in to cure for 60 seconds and I then decided I would come in with another layer of the Sweet Rose. So if you weren't happy with your thickness or your structure at this particular point but you wanted to keep the more sheer a pink colour, you could come in with the Crystal Clear but I wanted to add a little bit more hint of that pink so that's why I've opted to build up my second layer using the Sweet Rose. Again, I started off by doing my slip layer, but then when it's come to doing my builder gel layer, I haven't done as thick layer as the first layer because I don't need too much more thickness. I just needed a little bit more product in that apex area and a little bit more product running down the center of the nail. And as you can see, it gives off a completely different effect with the glitters. They look a lot softer, which was what I wanted for this set. Onto the middle finger, we're going to be doing a full builder gel now. So a simple, plain builder gel now, and we're going to do some gel polish art on the top. So I'm coming in with my thin slip layer. With your thin slip layer, you want to make sure you're getting as close to those cuticles as sidewalls as possible, but making sure you don't get any of that product on the cuticles or sidewalls. If you do, then remove it before you come in with your builder layer, because your builder layer kind of follows everywhere where you've applied your slip layer, but you don't have to take it as close to the cuticle or the sidewalls then I'm just walking that builder gel layer down the nail going from side to side I have sped up the video you want to work fairly slowly with it you don't want to pull it down the nail too quickly because if you work with a product too quick quickly you end up putting bubbles into it so just take your time don't worry about rushing and then pop that first layer in secure and we're going to come in with our second layer. If you was working on say natural nails or shorter nails than this, you might not need the second layer. It will depend on how thick you need your apex. So I wanted my apex to be a little bit thicker and the spine of my nail to be a little bit thicker due to the length of the nails. So that's why I'm coming in with a second layer. Starting off with that thin slip layer, applying this to the entire nail, keeping it nice and neat around that cuticle area. Then I'm picking up my builder gel ball and I'm just working this from side to side. As you see, I don't go right up to the cuticle with it because we've gone close to the cuticle using the slip layer. And then I'm just walking this from a side to side down the nail. Everyone has their own techniques with builder gel, but this is one of the ways I personally find easiest. As you can see, we've built up a slight apex and our product is all in the right place. So I'm going to pop that in to cure. Now I did also do exactly the same on the ring finger because I wanted these two nails to have a little bit of on top nail art further along in the video. On to the little finger, I'm going to do very, very similar to what I did on the pointer finger, but rather than using Sweet Rose, we're going to use Snow Glaze because I wanted to tie a little bit of white into this set as we are going to be doing a French on the middle finger. So as same as before, I'm keeping my brush with a little bit of crystal clear gel, builder gel on it, and then I'm picking up my glitters and placing them down on the nail, being really careful when working around that cuticle area. Because the little finger is the smallest nail, it is usually the trickiest I find to work on so you want to make sure that you are only taking a few pieces of glitter at a time just so you're not building up any thickness with that glitter or getting any on the cuticles or the skin so I'm kind of just tapping on pieces I do find this works easier if you start off with a fine glitter like I had in the little pot because then you get a lot of coverage using the finer pieces and then you can just tap on some of the chunkier pieces I've then popped that in to cure for 60 seconds and then we're going to take the beautiful Snow Glaze. Snow Glaze is probably my favourite colour in the Builder Gel range because I love the different designs you can create with it. I really love a lot of those milky soft white nails. So to start off with, we're popping down that thin slip layer, really working it around those glitter pieces. And then I'm just going to take my round brush to get a lot closer to the cuticle because the surface area on the little finger is a lot smaller. It's a lot easier to get a neat cuticle area with the round brush than what it is with your bottle brush. 
Then we're taking our builder layer and I'm again keeping this to a thin slash medium thickness, just taking this over the entire nail. You don't want to end up with too much product at your side wall like I did here. I think where these tips are very C curved, a lot of my product wanted to flow down the sides, which is a little bit annoying because it meant we've got to do a little bit more filing at the end of the set. But in all honesty, the Kiki London Easy Build Up Gel files like an absolute dream. It files so easy, so it doesn't matter too much if you're not 100% happy with your application or if your application's a little bit uneven because you can fix that up with your file. You'll see that the tips of my nails do flare out a little bit where they are C curved, but we're able to fix that up and get a much sharper square shape when it comes to filing. Onto our second layer of gel, I'm coming in with that thin slip layer. Again, the snow glaze is a nice soft white, so it created the effect that I wanted to create with it. But if you didn't want as much of the white coverage as what I have over the glitters, you could do this second layer with the crystal clear rather than the snow glaze. So once I'd popped that into Cure, that is all our Builder Gel applied, that's our design finished. If I did have a thumb to work on, I would have done the thumbnail the same as the little finger so that the set flowed across nicely. But seeing as there's no thumb to work on, we're going to come in with one of the Kiki London alcohol pads and make sure to remove that tacky inhibition layer from the Builder Gel. And then we're ready to come in and file. So I'm going to take the 180 grit side of my file and I'm going to start off by fixing up the lower arches of my tip and the side walls just so I've got my crisp shape. I'm not exactly doing the finished shape. I just want to start getting my shape into place. Then I'm going to come over the surface of the nail and buff out or sorry, file out any unevenness. So I'm looking at the nail from all angles, making sure that I'm happy with my side walls, and then I'm coming over the surface of the nail and removing any bulk or any bumpiness that might have been there from my application. Depending on how you work with your product, you're gonna have less or more filing to do. I did feel on certain nails, especially the glitter ones, where application wasn't 100% even as I would have liked it, so I had a little bit more filing to do. You can see there I'm running my thumb over the nail so as well as looking I can also feel if any of the surface isn't even and smooth. Then I'm going to come in again and fix up my shape. Because I'm working on a practice hand it is a little tricky to file, it's a lot easier to file your own nails. Once I have finished filing, I'm going to swap to my buffer and I'm just going to use the, I think I use both sides to be quite honest, but I'm going to I alternate between the two just to smooth out any of the scratches that are left from filing, just so that when we come to top coat, you're going to have a nice smooth surface. You don't want to over buff, you just want to very gently go over the surface of the nail, just because the file can leave deeper scratches in your nail. And already you can see the difference there between both of those nails from a little bit of filing. So off camera I did the exact same to all of the other nails and then I had to give them a really good clean to remove all of the dust. The dust loves to stick to the silicone hand so I had to make sure to get rid of all of that. Then we're ready to come in with our gel polish. So I'm going to take a coconut. I love this color for doing a French nail if you want a really bright white. If you want a more softer white, which might have worked a little bit better for this set, then I would recommend using French white. But to begin with, I wanted to have a really nice crisp white. So I'm taking my stripe liner brush and I'm really loading that up with my gel polish, working it through the bristles and then I brush off the excess so that I haven't got too much on my brush. And then we're going to begin creating our French. Now, I took this French a little bit deeper than what I would have liked it. I wish I'd kept it a little bit thinner, but I didn't really realize that till after I'd applied the first coat of color. It just looked a little bit too much white, I think, for this particular design. But all I'm doing is I'm taking my brush and my gel polish and I'm going straight across the nail and then I'm bringing in the sides of my French and rounding off that straight line. So at this point, I'm just mapping out that French, working out how far down the nail I want it, how far down the wings of the French I want them to go. So I'm just going from side to side, getting that as symmetrical as I can. And then we're going to fill in the very tip of the nail. So I started off by using the stripe liner brush just to get nice crisp lines and straight edges. And then once I'm happy with that, I will swap to the bottle brush to color it all in, just because then I feel like you get a lot smoother application. I just like to do it 
a majority of the hard part with the stripe liner brush. Then I'm gonna pop that in to cure for 30 seconds and I did decide to come over the top and do a second coat just because it was a little bit uneven. Coconut is very highly pigmented, so if you apply it well, you can sometimes get away of doing only one coat of it, but because I'd faffed about a little bit creating the French shape, the colour just didn't look flat and even, if that makes sense. So that was why I decided to come over the top with my second coat. Your second coat when doing a French is a hell of a lot easier than doing that first coat because you have already created most of the shape. And if you do make any little mistakes like I did here, you're able to come in with one of your, either your round or the angled nail art brush and just fix that up with a little bit of alcohol. Again, I'm going to fill in majority of the tip with the bottle brush. I'm just doing the tricky line part with that stripe liner brush. This nail to me looked very 90s. I remember when I very first started getting my nails done, I was quite young. Um, I think I was about 13, 14, and I loved getting pink and white tips where the white looked super, super bright. So now it always reminds me of that 90s vibe. <laughs> Anyway, over the top of the pointer and the ring finger, we're going to use some of these beautiful decals. These are the pink florals. I think that's what they're called. I will double check and leave it linked in the description box below. So I've cut out the four. I've cut out a couple. I don't think I ended up using all of them because I felt like it would have been too much on the design. I think I ended up only using three, but I've cut out the decals that I want to use. And then I'm placing them down on my stamper head, moistening them with a little bit of room temperature water. And then the backing paper easily slides off and you're able to press that water decal down into place. So I wanted these to cover my French effectively because I do love the effect that it gives off. So I decided I would pop one of the florals on one side and one of the like the leafy green pieces on the other side. So again, moisten the back of your image and then that once it's left for around 10 20 seconds that backing paper easily slides off i really love the stamping method for applying water decals you'll see i've got quite a few videos up on it on the channel once you have stamped them down i just take my silicone tool to ease out any creases now i did also apply a decal on the ring finger but unfortunately my camera went out of focus so a lot of the footage was really blurry so i decided to cut that out rather than you watching blurry footage so we're now at top coating. Now I wanted a combination of glossy and matte in this set. So I'm gonna take the no wipe top coat and I'm gonna use this on the pointer and the little finger. I decided to have these two nails glossy because the glitter's already hidden. So I felt as though it would have looked a little bit too much having these two nails matte. So I went for a glossy top coat on those two nails just going to give you a little bit of a shine you're not going to get loads of shine from those glitters because we are going for that hidden effect and then on the middle and the ring finger I decided to go for a matte top coat because I do really love a combination of matte and glossy in a set of nails now when you are applying your top coat over water decals or even foils if you were applying the matte top coat over foils then you want to kind of just float it on rather than scrubbing or pushing it on because you want to make sure that it's going over that edge or that lip from the water decals especially I find that more than foils so I kind of like to just get a nice neat cuticle area but just float the color the product sorry over the top and then you're not going to notice that ridge from the water decals as much. Usually I would use the no wipe rubber top coat because I find this gives you a lot more of a smoother top over any kind of nail art. But like I said, I wanted these two nails to have that matte effect. Once we had finished applying our top coats, I popped these in to cure for 30 seconds and this was the finished result. So I really hope you all enjoyed watching. If you have any questions or comments, please do pop them below and I'll be happy to help. If you did enjoy today's video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit that subscription button if you haven't already. And I shall see you all again in next week's video. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.